What do you think, friend Yamaka, when that man had approached that householder or householder's son and said to him, I would serve you, sir. Wasn't he a murderer even then, though the other did not recognize him as my murderer? And when the man was serving him, rising up before him, retiring after him, doing whatever he wants, agreeable in his conduct, enduring in his speech, wasn't he a murderer then too, though the other did not recognize him as my murderer? And when the man came upon him while he was alone and took his life with a sharp knife, wasn't he a murderer then too, though the other did not recognize him as my murderer? Yes, friend. So too, friend Yamaka, the unlearned, ordinary worldling, who, who does not see noble ones in, and is unskilled and untrained in their Dhamma, who does not see superior persons and is unskilled and untrained in their Dhamma, regards body as self or self as possessing body or body as in self or self as in body. Similarly, he regards feeling, perception, volition, consciousness eh, as self or uh, self as possessing the aggregates eh, or the aggregates as in the self or self as in the aggregates. Eh. He does not understand as it really is, impermanent body as impermanent, impermanent feeling as impermanent, impermanent perception, volition, consciousness as impermanent. He does not understand as it really is, painful body, feeling, perception, volition, consciousness as painful. He does not understand as it really is, selfless body, feeling, perception, volition and consciousness as selfless. He does not understand as it really is, conditioned body, feeling, perception, volition, consciousness as conditioned. He does not understand as it really is, murderous body, feeling, perception, volition, consciousness as murderous aggregates. He becomes engaged with body, clings to it, and takes a stand upon it as my self. He become, similarly, he becomes engaged with feeling, perception, volition, consciousness, clings to them, and takes a stand upon them as my self. These same five aggregates of clinging, to which he becomes engaged, and to which he clings to, lead to his harm and suffering for a long time. But friend, the learned noble disciple who, is, who sees noble ones, uh, etc., does not regard body as self, or self as possessing body, or body as in self, or self as in body. Similarly, he does not regard feeling, perception, volition, consciousness uh, as self, uh, or self as possessing the aggregates, uh, or the aggregates as in the self, or self as in the aggregates. Uh. He understands as it's really, as they really are, impermanent body, feeling, perception, volition, and consciousness uh, as impermanent. He understands as they really are, uh, painful uh, uh, body, feeling, perception, volition, consciousness uh, as painful aggregates. He understands as they really are, selfless body, feeling, perception, volition, consciousness uh, as selfless aggregates. He understands as they really are, conditioned body, feeling, perception, volition, consciousness uh, as conditioned aggregates. Uh. He understands as they really are, murderous body, feeling, perception, volition, consciousness uh, as murderous aggregates. Uh. He does not become engaged with body, cling to it, and take a stand upon it as myself. He does not become engaged with feeling, perception, volition, consciousness, uh, cling to them uh, and take upon take a stand upon them as myself. These same five aggregates of attachment to which he does not become engaged and to which he does not uh, attach uh, lead to his welfare and happiness for a long time. And then remember Yamaka said, So it is, friend Sariputta, for those venerable ones who have such compassionate and benevolent brothers in the holy life to admonish and instruct them, and now that I have heard this Dhamma teaching of the Venerable Sariputta, my mind is liberated from the asavas by non-clinging. This is what the Venerable Sariputta said. Elated, the Venerable Yamaka delighted in the Venerable Sariputta statement. That's the end of the Sutta. So you see, eh, in our earliest discourses of the Buddha, the, Bu the Buddha always praised Venerable Sariputta as the disciple with the highest wisdom. That's why you see, eh, in several discourses, uh, he can teach the other monks uh, until they attain stream entry uh, 
Or like in this case, uh, he taught this monk until this monk became an arahant. Uh, so the Buddha says uh, that the Venerable, Venerable Sariputta turns the Dhamma wheel uh, exactly like the Buddha himself. Uh, that's why the Buddha prays Venerable Sariputta so much. Uh, but later, Mahayana books uh, always try to belittle this Venerable Sariputta. Uh, so you see the last part, uh, this uh, uh, Venerable Sariputta uh, made this simile uh, for this uh, Venerable Yamaka that uh, just like a murderer wants to murder somebody, uh, he comes disguised la, as a servant uh, and serves that man very well. Uh, but one day when the man is alone, uh, he kills him. La. So in the same way, uh, our five aggregates uh, serve us, uh, serve us very well. Uh, uh, we get pleasure from the five aggregates uh, and we are very pleased with the five aggregates. La. But the Buddha, uh, but the Venerable Sariputta says uh, actually they are murderers. Uh, because when we cling to them, we attach to them uh, as I and mine. Uh, then when the five aggregates cease, uh, when the body dies, uh, uh, and then we feel uh, I die. That means I am murdered. Uh, murdered by who? <laughs> by murdered uh, by these five aggregates. Uh, the same five aggregates uh, that we cling to, we thought was uh, our good friend, uh, they are our source of happiness. Uh, but it turns out uh, that because we cling to them, uh, so when they die, uh, we feel uh, I die. But for somebody like an arahan, uh, although he has the same aggregates, uh, he does not cling to to the aggregates. Uh, he sees them as not self. Uh, he sees them as impermanent, a source of suffering. Uh. So because he does not cling to them, uh, when the body dies, uh, he just knows uh, the body uh, being impermanent uh, uh, has uh, lived its shelf life. Uh, mm. uh, the time has come. Uh, so. It is dying. It does not attach to it, so it does not suffer. We suffer because we attach to the aggregates as I and mine. So here the teaching is to see them as murderers, not something to cling to, to attach to. So that's uh, quite an interesting sutta, huh? how he changed this monk huh, from a wrong view huh, to attain stream entry and further after teaching him that simile, huh, the monk attained liberation and became an arahan. Huh? The next sutta is 22.87. On one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling at Rajagaha in the bamboo grove, the squirrel sanctuary. And on that occasion, the Venerable Vakkali was dwelling in a potter's shed, sick afflicted, gravely ill. Then the Venerable Vakali addressed his attendants. Come friends, approach the Blessed One. Pay homage to him in my name, with your head at his feet, and say, Venerable Sir, the monk Vakali is sick, afflicted, gravely ill. He pays homage to the Blessed One, with his head at his feet. Then say, it would be good, Venerable Sir, if the Blessed One would approach the monk Vakali out of compassion. Yes, friend, those monks replied. And they approached the Blessed One, paid homage to him, sat down to one side and delivered their message. The Blessed One consented by silence. Then the Blessed One dressed and taking bowl and robe, approached the Venerable Vakali. The Venerable Vakali saw the Blessed One coming in the distance and stirred on his bed. The Blessed One said to him, Enough, Vakali, do not stir on your bed. There are there are these seats ready. I will sit down there. Stop here for a moment. This Venerable Vakali was, is one of the monks uh, who had great respect for the Buddha. Uh, so when the Buddha came to see him, uh, even though he was uh, actually dying, uh, he was so sick, uh, he was dying, uh, he tried to get up. Uh, but the Buddha told him, no need to get up. Uh, we have seats here. Uh, I will sit down. Here. Uh, the Blessed One then sat down on the appointed seat and said to the Venerable Vakali, I hope you are bearing up, Vakali. I hope you are getting better. I hope that your painful feelings are subsiding and not increasing, and that their subsiding, not their increase, is to be discerned, to be seen. Venerable Sir, I am not bearing up. I am not getting better. Strong, painful feelings are increasing in me, not subsiding and their increase, not their subsiding, is to be discerned. 
I hope then, Bakali, that you are not troubled by remorse and regret. Indeed, Venerable Sir, I have quite a lot of remorse and regret. I hope, Bakali, that you have nothing for which to reproach yourself in regard to virtue. And he said, I have nothing, Venerable Sir, for which to reproach myself in regard to virtue. Then, Bakali, if you have nothing for which to reproach yourself in regard to virtue, why are you troubled by remorse and regret? And he said, For a long time, Venerable Sir, I have wanted to come and see the Blessed One, but I haven't been fit enough to do so. And the Buddha said, Enough, Vakali. Why do you want to see this foul body? One who sees the Dhamma sees me. One who sees me sees the Dhamma. For in seeing the Dhamma, Vakali, one sees me. And in seeing me, one sees the Dhamma. I'll stop here for a moment. So he said, now he... He has remorse and regret. Why? Not because uh, he has broken the precepts, but because uh, he wanted to see the Buddha for a long time, uh, that he has been so sick, uh, he has not been able to walk to see the Buddha. And now that the Buddha has come near near to him, uh, he asked uh, the other monks uh, to call the Buddha to come and see him. And the Buddha, the Buddha said, why do you want to see this smelly body? If you see the Dhamma, you have seen me. If you see me, you have seen the Dhamma. So now that we are studying the Dhamma, uh, we are seeing the Dhamma, so we are seeing the Buddha also. Hmm. What do you think, Vakali? Is body permanent or impermanent? Impermanent, Venerable Sir. Uh, Similarly, is what is impermanent suffering or happiness? And it says suffering. Is what is impermanent subject to change, fit to be regarded as uh, feel regarded as this is mine, this I am, this is myself. And he says, No, Venerable Sir. Uh, so, similarly, for feeling, perception, volition, and consciousness. Uh, so, seeing thus, a uh, noble disciple becomes disenchanted and then dispassionate and becomes liberated. Uh, then the Blessed One, having given this exhortation to the Venerable Vakali, rose from his seat and departed from Mount Vulture Peak. Then not long after the Blessed One had left, the Venerable Vakali addressed his attendants thus, Come friends, lift me up on this bed and carry me to the black rock on the Isigili slope. How can one like me think of dying among the houses? Yes, friend, those monks replied. And having lifted up the Venerable Vakali on the bed, they carried him to the black rock on the Isigili slope. Stop here for a moment. Uh. This Venerable Vakali, because he was sick, uh, they had put him in the porter's shed. Uh. He was dwelling in the porter's shed. Uh. But now that he knew uh, that he was going to die, uh, uh, during the Buddha's time, uh, almost all the monks uh, were forest monks. Uh. So he had been living in the forest a long time. Uh. Now that he was approaching death, uh, he thought, uh, if he dies in the potter's shed, uh, it's like dying in a house, uh, shameful. Uh, so he wanted uh, to die in the open air. Uh, so they, uh, he asked them to carry him to the black rock uh, to die there. The Blessed One spent the rest of that day and night on Mount Vulture Peak. Then when the night was well advanced, two devatas of stunning beauty approached the Blessed One, illuminating the whole of Vulture Peak. Standing to one side, one devata said to the Blessed One, Venerable Sir, the monk Vakali is intent on deliverance. The other devata said, Surely, Venerable Sir, he will be liberated as one well liberated. This is what those devatas said. Having said this, they paid homage to the Blessed One, and keeping him on their right, they disappeared right there. Stop here for a moment. Huh? So here you see, uh, uh, in the middle of the night, uh, two devas came to inform the Buddha uh, that the Venerable Vakali uh, was striving uh, with all his energy uh, to attain liberation, uh, to attain uh, enlightenment, uh, arahanhood. Uh. And then the other one said, uh, definitely he will attain. Uh, these, these devas, because they are psychic, uh, they, are psychic uh, they, they, they know what they are saying. Uh, so... Uh, this also shows uh, sometimes uh, uh, sometimes the Buddha doesn't know something, uh, they will come and inform the Buddha. Uh. 
Sometimes because the Buddha doesn't know, because the Buddha doesn't contemplate, sometimes he's deep in samadhi.